This video looks at trying to understand the speed behaviour of a car and uses a MATLAB app to support that. And you'll notice if you want a neat organisation of many more files and videos linked to these types of topics, please go to this website and you'll find there's many freely available. Introduction then. So we're going to focus on a particular application which is common to most of us, the road speed of a car. Now, we're focusing on what might be called an introductory modelling and dynamics course. So we're going to just assume a simple friction and mass model. We want to ask, how does this speed depend upon car mass, friction, road slope and engine force? And you'll notice here from this silly cartoon, road slope can be a big factor on the speed. Road speed modelling then. So we're going to assume a simple mass damper model as illustrated in these two figures at the top. So friction, force is B times velocity, B some constant, and acceleration, mass times acceleration is some force, that's Newton's law. If we combine those two together, we get the model for the car, mdv dt plus bv equals f, the overall force on the road. Now, if there's a road slope, the model changes slightly, we end up with this extra term minus mg theta um, alongside the force. Core questions we might want to ask then. How do we expect the speed behaviour to depend on different parameters, mass m, friction constant b, engine force f and road slope? And do real simulations confirm what we expect? We're going to use a MATLAB app for this part. And then later we will confirm these expectations using some mathematical analysis with the equations that you can see here. Baseline expectations then. If you have the same car, but one is heavily loaded and the other is not, how would you expect the behaviour to differ? You can see here we've got two cars, but one of them is carrying lots of luggage and lots of passengers and the other isn't. Well, what you would expect, I would guess, is the right-hand car is going to be much slower to accelerate. So it will have a larger time constant t. So in other words, if you increase the mass, the time constant gets larger. More baseline expectations. If you've got two cars, one that's well streamlined, such as the racing car on the left, and one which is not, such as this one on the right, clearly one has a low resistance and the other has a high resistance. So what would you expect? Well, probably you'd expect the left-hand car would achieve a faster speed for the same force on the road. So in other words, if B is smaller, and that should say faster, easy to have typos, isn't it? Then you would expect a faster speed on the road. And what about the impact on the time constant? Well, we're not going to look at that here, but we'll get to that soon. So we've got this MATLAB app, car velocity 2, and we're going to use this to try and reinforce our expectation of what happens as I make changes in mass and changes in friction, and also what happens if I change the road slope or the engine power. So let's bring this animation across. Here it is. So what we're going to do, we'll start with a simple simulation with a mass at 500. And there you can see it's running. Now, if you're wondering, the red road part in the top curve shows you the steady state speed and the black shows you the actual speed. So you can see how quickly the car is accelerating. So here you can see the steady state's 30, the time constant's two and a half. So what happens if I make the car a bit heavier. So let's go up by 500 kilograms and run again. So now that the car's heavier, what can you see? You can see it's much slower to accelerate, but the key thing is it gets to the same steady state. So the time constant is slower. You can see this in the bottom right, but the steady state is the same. Let's make the mass even bigger, 1500, and run again. And what do you notice? The acceleration is slower, but again, the steady state is the same. So changing the mass seems to be changing the time constant, but not changing the steady state. And if we go up to 2000, just for completeness, and you can see the same impact. So as the mass gets bigger, the time constant gets slower, the acceleration gets slower, but the steady state is the same. So let's clear all that. We'll take the mass back down to something sensible. 
let's say a thousand, that will probably do. And now let's look at the impact of friction. So what if we have a friction of a hundred, very low friction, so a racing car. What do we see now? We can see it's going quite fast, all right? The steady state here is going to get up to something roughly like 60. You can see in the right hand curve, the steady state is 60. What happens if I make the friction a bit bigger? So let's go up to 200 and run again. Now, what do you notice? What you can see is I'm getting to a slower steady state. So increasing friction, I've got a slower steady state. But also, if you look in these bottom right, so I just left figure, and look at the legend, you can see the time constant has got faster. So I've increased the friction, the time constant's got faster. So let's now take it to 300. And you can see again, the steady state speed is now getting slower as friction gets bigger. And again, the time constant is getting faster. Or well, I could go to 400 and you will see the same pattern again. The steady state is getting slower, the time constant is getting faster. Okay, so next what we might want to do is say what would happen if I changed the road slope. So let's take friction back to something like 200 and let's run the simulation on a flat road. So there we've got a flat road and you can see we're getting to 30. What happens then if I take the road slope up to something like 10 degrees? What do you expect to happen? Well, you would expect the car to go slower. You say, I'm going uphill now. This is hard work. So for the same engine force, I am not going to get as fast. But look at the time constant. The time constant has not been changed. So I've got a slower steady state, a slower acceleration, but the time constant's the same. So if I make the slope even steeper, now up to 20 degrees, again, you see the same pattern. A smaller steady state, but the time constant is not changed. And I can also go downhill. What would you expect to happen if you go downhill? And you can see now I'm going faster because I'm going downhill. But once again, the time constant's not changed. Now, without um, cleaning everything, you might also say, well, what would be the impact of changing the engine force? So if I had a bigger engine force, so let's put a bigger engine force in and see what happens now. And you'll see, unsurprisingly, more force on the road. And what happens? You've got a faster speed, faster acceleration, faster steady state. But once again, no change in the time constant. So let's look at the maths and see if the maths, maths reinforce what we've just observed. So the time constant is given by m over b. So what you can see is if you increase m, the time constant goes up, you get slower. If you increase b, the time constant gets smaller, so you're faster. Similarly, let's look at the steady state. So if you increase b, you can see the steady state gets smaller. But if you increase f, the steady state gets faster. Now what about the slope? You can also see that the slope affects the steady state. You can see that from this bottom hand side, this bit here, but does not affect the time constant. So some conclusions. We focused on the speed behaviour of a car with a simple mass damper model, we briefly introduced the mathematical modelling and we used a MATLAB app to demonstrate how behaviour changes as the mass damping engine force and the slope there.